From royal breakdancing at parties to breakdowns in communication. An annus horribilis. These are some of our top picks for moments the Crown got right and some of the moments they got wrong in season five. Thank you, thank you. Ahead of the season's release, the show received criticism for sensationalising the truth. But whilst Prince Charles did indeed breakdance at a Prince's Trust charity event, what else did they get right and what did they get wrong? First up, Tampon Gate. Tampon Gate happened in January 1993 when a real life phone conversation between Charles and Camilla was leaked to the Sunday Mirror. In the chat, which was recorded years earlier, Charles made a comment about, well, wanting to be very close to Camilla. I wish I could just live inside your trousers or something, so much easier. <laughs> what are you going to turn into, a pair of knickers? <laughs> Tampax. The air indeed hired Mark Boland to fix the fiasco. But did we really need to relive this entire cringeworthy conversation? I'll leave that one up to you. Next up, Philip's relationship with Penny Natchball. In season 5, we see Prince Philip's relationships with not one, but two women as focal points to the story. One being the Queen, the second his 30-year younger confidant, Penelope Natchball. They grow close through the season, and it's true that the pair shared a special bond in real life, though their relationship was purely platonic, contrary to what the show may lead us to believe. Penny is in the family, a married woman. Yes, I'm entirely focused on her marriage. Their closeness did indeed spark relationship rumours at the time, but Prince Philip was quick to fend them off, reminding us all that he was accompanied everywhere he went. The Fireds. In episode 3, we're introduced to Mohammed Al Fayed, the Egyptian businessman who apparently is a royalist and buys department store Harrods just to meet the Queen. In actual fact, it's reported Al Fayed had more hostility towards the monarchy than what we see, having been denied UK citizenship in the past. Reports on his meeting with Diana vary, but he certainly will have come across the princess at some time or another. Diana was there supporting Charles, who played alongside Dodi Fayed, who would later enter a relationship with Diana though he was allegedly also in another relationship at the time. Next up, the revenge dress. Just how it played out in real life, the famous black gown makes its appearance after Prince Charles confesses to being unfaithful on a television interview. The dress had been sat in Diana's closet for a number of years, but eventually came out to make a statement. And credit to the costume department on that one. We have to say, just like in real life, that was a showstopper. Annas Horribilis. This scene was part correct and part incorrect. The Queen famously said, in her own words, 1992 wasn't the best year for the royal family. It has turned out to be an annus horribilis. That year, three of her children's marriages broke down and the Windsor Castle fire caused around £40 million worth of damage to the estate. In the November of that year, the Queen delivered her famous speech. It has turned out to be an annus horribilis. The Crown depicts this well, but the scripting soon differs from reality. The real Queen didn't speak of errors of the past, nor pay tribute to her family. And there's also no proof that the Queen Mother did indeed disapprove of this speech, as it was depicted. Last but certainly not least, the Panorama interview. This part of the show was again both right and wrong. Princess Diana's famous interview with journalist Martin Bashir went down in history. The show's creators also addressed the recent BBC investigation into how Mr Bashir obtained the interview in the first place, where it was revealed he misled the royals into securing it. In the episode, we also see BBC executives clash over the interview, which is also supposedly true. Though there's nothing to prove that Diana actually gave the Queen a heads up before the footage aired. The interview also was indeed filmed in Diana's sitting room in Kensington Palace on Guy Fawkes Night. Poignant, right? But was it intentional? Well, we'll leave that one to you. Were you shocked by any of these? Well, leave a comment and a like and share this video. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos just like this one. But before we go, can we please see our King's Breakdance moves one last time?